With a score of 93 on Metacritic, 1.2 million copies sold, and the second shorter speedrun time of any other game in the series at just over 2 minutes long, we'll talk about that a bit later, Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars is in my opinion the most underrated game in the entire franchise, so let's take a look at it. The game was released in 2009, developed by Rockstar Leeds, the same studio that made the previous two handheld GTAs we all know and love, those obviously being Liberty City and Vice City Stories. But unlike those two, who remained exclusive to Sony's ecosystem, never being ported to Xbox or PC, Chinatown Wars was developed mainly for the Nintendo DS, but would also be developed for the PSP. A year later, in 2010, it came out for the iOS and iPod Touch, and for some reason, only 4 years later, in 2014, it came for the Android 2. Why such a big gap between those ports? Who knows. Since the game was made with the Nintendo DS in mind, it features a 2.5D camera angle and the graphics are obviously a bit dumbed down in comparison to the other titles. But despite all of that, it takes place in the HD universe featuring the whole state of liberty. Minus Alderney, because 1. it's a different state, and 2. it's sort of irrelevant to the story anyway. And it's not missing anything either. Algonquin, Bohan, Broker and Dukes are all there, downscaled to the hardware of the DS. Which is still mind-blowing to me. The story takes place one year after the events of GTA 4 and the episodes from Liberty City. Following the journey of Huang Li, a rich kid from China who comes to Liberty City to give the family heirloom to his uncle Kenny and to seek revenge for the death of his father. Shortly after his arrival, instead of being met with champagne bottles and confetti, he is attacked by unknown assassins and a bullet grazes him on one side of his head. He's then kidnapped, but after the two guys who took him believe he's dead, they decide to dump him in a river. We escape and begin our journey in America's worst city. The introduction is really well thought out, as it introduces a lot of mechanics from the get-go, such as swimming and mini games like breaking of the window and hot wiring of cars, that add an extra layer of interaction and immersion that has never been replicated again in any other GTA game. Those aren't the only interactive mini games Chinatown Wars has to offer, but we'll talk about them later. We finally meet with Uncle Kenny, who thought we died on arrival, and asks about the sword we were supposed to bring him, which got stolen earlier by the unknown assassins. The sword was supposed to be given to the current triad leader, Xin Zhao Ming, as a way to secure his position when he would eventually step down. But because Kenny fails to deliver his promise, he is reduced in power and is forced to work alongside Huang to keep the business above water. Over the course of the story, we meet various characters, mainly other gang members, bosses, even an undercover cop named Wade Heaston and a potential love interest for Huang, who is killed in the very next mission. Quite unfortunate for our boy Huang. After a long journey consisting of 58 main missions, working with all kinds of weird individuals and doing various missions, with some of them like Flatliner, even traumatizing to say the least. Yeah, they got away with putting this on a Nintendo game somehow. We finally reach the end game, where it's revealed that the man behind our father's death is actually his own brother, Uncle Kenny. This puts Huang in a difficult spot. Realizing the man he thought had his back and was even part of his family, decided that it was the best thing in order to fulfill his desire to become boss of the triads. We then chase him through the city in a wild boat shootout that also involves a minigun, then another chase through the streets, and then finally we confront him, but not before he attempts to kill Xin. Fortunately, he survives and is incarcerated, as the FIB raid the building just after we killed Kenny. Wade Heaston, who sort of befriends the protagonist over the course of the game, pulls strings and arrests everybody except Huang, thus putting an end to our character's quest in seeking revenge. You might not believe it, but the story is actually really good, and if you can look past the cartoonish team of the game, you get immersed in a really fantastic journey. Since the hardware is limited, we don't get the classic GTA cutscenes with voice acting and such. Instead, the game plays out the cutscenes in a way that is similar to manga panels, which really fits the team of the game. And they are accompanied by various soundtracks depending on the mission giver, each character having a different one. To some, this might be a turnoff, and I can understand that. However, even if you don't care about the story at all, it's still a great game you should definitely check out if you've never played it before. After all, it is a GTA game. You can just drive around, get weapons and cause a huge mayhem on the streets of Liberty City for a true classical GTA experience. And if you really want to skip over the entire game and finish the story in just over 2 minutes, let me introduce you to the any% percent speedrun of this game, and one of the most mind-blowing skips in GTA speedrunning overall. Only a few months after release, a save glitch that you can do right at the start of the game was discovered. All you have to do is start a new game, then mash the pause button at the right time, and if done right, you should be able to save your game. You would then load that save file and you would be placed in your apartment with all the missions unlocked, including the final one. And if you happen to start it, you would also begin from the final checkpoint of the mission. And yes, the game has a checkpoint system, as well as a mission replay feature, something we first saw in GTA 4's DLCs. 
From there, you would only need to do the boat chase I've mentioned earlier, which is an auto scroller, meaning no matter your inputs, it would always take the same amount of time to complete, then the car chase, and a fight with Kenny to finish off the run. You don't get any weapons, but that doesn't stop runners from finishing off Kenny in about 2 seconds, as the hand to hand combat in this game can take out enemies really easily. But I failed to do so, and I got killed. What a shame. There's not much luck involved, except for the vehicle you get at the start of the run when you exit the apartment. So this makes the speedrun very linear and really optimized with a world record of 2 minutes and 4 seconds. In fact, it's so optimized that the second place on the leaderboard of 2 minutes and 5 seconds is currently tied between two runners. Truly insane if you think about it. And I'd also like to point out that the fastest platform to play the game on is mobile, as the game removes traffic when you reach a fast speed on vehicles, making the initial drive shorter than on other versions of the game. There is also obviously a second 90% category that prohibits this glitch, and plays all 58 main missions from start to finish with a time around 2 hours and 40 minutes. About what you'd expect from a general GTA 90% run. If you'd like to know more about the speedrun of this game and the other categories available on the leaderboards, be sure to check out the Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars page on speedrun.com. Moving on to gameplay, Chinatown Wars introduces a lot of new and never before seen activities in the free room to accompany the story, like the infamous drug dealing minigame which, to this day, is praised as one of Rockstar's greatest side activity ever implemented into a game. And I share that opinion too, because it's more than just a simple way to earn cash, there's an entire system, things in the free room that can impact price of goods, actually having to use your safe houses that you buy throughout the city to stash them, avoid getting busted by the cops so as to not lose whatever you carry on yourself, and so much more. There are lots of dealers spread across the map that you can interact with and all you gotta do is buy low and sell high. Quite simple, isn't it? Just buy when you see the green arrow on an item, which indicates the possibility of making a profit, and sell it to someone else when they're interested in said item. Well, there's more to it. The map has different zones with colors that represent the various gangs of Liberty City and each of them have a different interest for a certain item and will also have different prices so you could buy from a gang territory and sell in another to make a decent profit. Deals can also obviously be busted by cops, and you'll have to escape from them in order to keep the stash, making things a little interesting. Also, as a sort of collectible, security cameras can be destroyed around the map, but unlike the previous games that reward you with guns and vehicles, here instead, your reward is lower prices when buying, with a maximum of 40% reduction in prices when you destroy all 100 hidden cameras. You also occasionally get these emails in the form of tip-offs that inform you of good deals you can take advantage of in order to increase your profits. The minigame is really well thought out, and I have to give props to Rockstar for not only making it, but also for releasing it on the Nintendo 2, which obviously caused a lot of controversy around the game and Rockstar as a company. Another classic scandal that surfaces for every GTA release. I mean, you can't really have a release without controversy, it's part of the marketing campaign by now. Besides that, the game doesn't lack any elements of a modern HD era game. It has the previously mentioned checkpoint system in case you fail a mission halfway through, a GPS on your minimap to navigate more easily, a cool way to get Molotovs and actually make use of gas stations, not just have them for the players to blow them up. Oh, and who can forget Scratchers? Because after featuring graphic violence and drugs, the only thing the game really needed was a virtual gambling mechanic. I'll admit though, this was my favorite activity in the game, and I've lost count on how much time I've spent trying to win the house by scratching tickets. A truly immersive experience. The combat is also much better than in previous top-down games. You can target enemies directly and even switch between who you want to target with the press of a button. There's a weapon wheel that allows you to switch directly to the weapon of your choosing instead of scrolling, something we all know from GTA V. You can also take cover behind cars, walls, crates, and other objects, and since I've mentioned walls, you can also climb over them if they're roughly the same height as Huang, which is really neat. The Wanted system also has a unique mechanic, where ramming enough cop cars off the road will decrease your rating, but you could also use a pay and spray or just hide from the cops. I also need to talk about the open world environment, which, again, doesn't lack any elements you might see in other older or even modern GTAs. There are different weather types like fog and rain, Pets will use umbrellas or run to a nearby shelter, and you'll even see NPCs sitting on a bench and reading newspapers. The game has tons of content to get you hooked on, and it was critically acclaimed for having said unique mechanics, the impressive art style, and having so much stuff despite the technical limitations. And to this day, Chinatown Wars remains the highest rated game on a Nintendo DS, and I think it deserves that spot. However, despite the love and praise the game received, it only sold roughly 1.2 million copies worldwide, making it the third worst selling game in the franchise, even lower than the first two Grand Theft Auto games, London expansions not included. Which is unfortunate, because I think it's a really great game and worth more than just trying it out once. If given enough playtime, you'll quickly fall in love with it and would want to finish it, or at least check out all the content it has to offer. I can't really pinpoint a direct cause for the low amount of sales, but it'd be that by 2009, most gamers have long moved on from top-down games and wouldn't want to give Chinatown Wars a chance. 
or maybe it was because the game had only released for a limited amount of platforms initially, honestly, who knows. But the amount of sales doesn't speak for how great a game is, well, at least in this case. Just like I've said in the intro, the game is truly the most underrated GTA in the entire franchise, and if you haven't tried it, please, for me, give it a go. Whether you decide to emulate it or get it on your phone, I can assure you you'll have a great time playing the game. I, for one, had a great time revisiting the game and making this video. And be sure that by the time you're watching this, I'm probably still scratching tickets trying to win the safe house. But maybe I've earned it by then, hopefully. If you liked what you saw, leave a like, comment down below your thoughts, and let me know if you've played the game and what you found in it that piqued your interest. And of course, consider subscribing if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching.